Hi there family, it's your girl Toya C. I hope everybody had a wonderful and great weekend. Um, I just wanted to come in here to start the week with you guys to just talk to you guys about um, rising above trials and adversity. If we're going to be honest, life is tough. And yes, when life does get tough, it hits every single one of us differently. Some people have the ability to bounce back quicker than others. Some have the ability to be able to rise above it and some actually get drowned in their life's problems. Me talking to you guys about this today is not just coming from me just picking this on a whim. Um, I had a very tough weekend, if I'm being honest, a very challenging weekend, where pretty much something I consider to be a testimony became a trial. See, oftentimes we hear that trials often become testimonies or tests lead to testimonies, but very rarely do you hear or do you um, hear people mention their experiences as to them having testimonies that ultimately become trials again, right? I had received a breakthrough on something I've been trusting God for for a while. And I was so grateful. I was literally rejoicing, you know, giving thanks to God. And unfortunately, pretty soon that testimony became another, a test all over again. And I found myself in a very, very um, discouraged state, if I'm being honest with you guys. You guys know I like to be very, very honest and transparent. I was very, very discouraged. I had questions. I was overwhelmed. But in the midst of me questioning and just, you know, I guess for the lack of words, lamenting to God, I, you know, got some answers that I wanted to just come in here and just share with you guys today in the hopes that it would encourage you to, to persevere and to learn to see your challenges and trials from a different perspective. So let's just get right into it. When I began to pray in my room, which is this room that I'm recording in, my prayer room, and I was just talking to God silently about what I felt. The Holy Spirit laid this on my heart. And what I heard in my spirit was this, the weight of your trials should never determine the weight of your praise. Ooh. I was like, man, that's heavy. It was a very heavy pill to swallow. Um, this is not to say that when I was going through my moment that I was taking God's praise away from him in any way, shape or form, but I did allow that adversity and that trial to limit my praise. It almost silenced me. Have you ever experienced facing a situation that overwhelms you so much that you just feel like you're about to drown and it's consuming you? And though you want to utter the words, speak the scripture, speak life and, and praise God, but you just can't open your mouth? Well, that's exactly what I experienced this weekend. I was in a place where I just could not open my mouth. Even though my heart was praising, I could not get out of that cloud. And the Spirit of God began to tell me that that was a weight that was placed on me due to the trial or the test that I was experiencing. And I'd never really seen it that way. I'd never really seen going through. I knew that, okay, as a believer, we all know that the issues we face in life, you know, sometimes it can be trials that come from the enemy. And sometimes God allows it to be a test in our lives, right? And of course, if we're going to be honest, some of them are afflict, self-afflicted, but that's, not, that's a different video for another day. But pretty much, I never took a moment to think of you know, trials and tribulations being not just something that comes from the enemy, but actually a tool or weapon against God's children that is being used by the enemy. And the minute God was able to give me the ability to see that from that perspective, ooh, I became very empowered. This is not to say the problem has gone away. This is not to say the test is out the door, because trust me, I am still passing through right now as I'm talking to you right here on the screen. But the difference now between what I felt yesterday and what I feel today is that I now have a different way of looking at the test or being tested rather, just generally as a human being or as a child of God. No longer do I see my tests and adversities as, um, what's the word? Just, oh, something the enemy is doing. I actually understand more about it. I see it as a tool. And so now that I see it as a tool, I'm able to counteract it with the tool God has given to me, if that makes any sense, which is the word of God. And the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty strong to the pulling down of strongholds. I've always read that scripture. I've always, you know, quoted it, but I got a new, um, I guess I got a new insight as to what that scripture means, especially in reference to what I'm currently passing through, is that when we are in war or when we are at war with the enemy rather, He's going to use his own weapons. The question is, what is your weapon? What is my weapon? That's one. Two, are we able to identify the weapons of the enemy? To know how to, um, I guess, nullify those weapons. 
because if you cannot identify how your enemy is coming at you, chances are you're probably not going to win that battle, right? And so as, as children of God, it's one thing for us to have faith in God. It's another thing for us to partner with God and allow the Spirit of God to engage us and reveal to us um, what the devices of the enemy are, that we may continue to stay victorious in Christ. I wrote down a couple of things that I'm going to share with you guys because of time. I'm trying to keep my videos as short as possible those days so I don't lose you guys. But again, this is a very, very critical subject that I want to share with you guys. And I just pray that it really encourages somebody that is passing through right now. I pray that it really opens your eyes, your spiritual eyes and your mind to know that trials are just more than things that impact how we feel. Right? It goes beyond just our feelings and how we react to natural everyday life issues. No matter what it is that you encounter or you're currently encountering right now in your faith journey, I just want to encourage you to make up in your mind that even while being present in your trial, His praise would never depart from your lips, but most importantly, it would never depart from your heart. Hmm. The enemy knows what he's doing. He is a very, very tricky individual. Sketchy is the word. He knows that if he can disconnect us from being in a place of gratitude, and not, not just even gratitude, a place of being in awe of who God is, that we can shift our focus from God himself to our problems, that that disconnect makes it easier for us to be pray. So when I say to you that you need to, be, to make up in your mind that irrespective of what you may be presently passing through, that you are still going to continue to praise God above those things. That's exactly what I mean. Number two, understand that the trials you're facing in your life are weapons in the hands of the enemy. You are able to nullify those weapons by staying in a place, in a mindset of praise at all times. Lastly, do not let your trials silence your testimony. Mm. This last point was what? It was the last word I got when I, you know, had my moment of just talking to the Lord. Yes, that testimony that I, I had felt like, you know, was taken away from me and, and pretty much I was back to being tested again. But God began to remind me that, no, that's just what the enemy wants you to believe. Don't allow the trials that come your way, even while you feel like that trial is not completely over, limits the testimony of, of the works that I'm currently doing from your lips and from your heart. Don't allow the trials to steal your testimony because whether the enemy likes it or not, what caused me to testify before the test began all over again is still valid. The Lord began to show me, Toyo, see, I did what I did and nothing can ever take that away. See, everything else the enemy did after that was a facade <laughs> to, to pretty much prevent you from seeing what was behind the scenes, what I had already done. It's an euphoric experience the enemy created for you, and unfortunately you fell for it. Which is why I'm emphasizing on this last point. That yes, we are gonna continue to pass through things. Life is not for the faint-hearted, I dare say it. Life is not easy, you know, and quite frankly, if we're gonna be honest, everybody wants to have a story to tell the world. Everybody wants to, you know, have a story that would impact lives. But if we're gonna be honest with ourselves, we have to acknowledge the fact that every story has different chapters and every chapter cannot be the same. There will be some chapters that are beautiful and lovely and there will be some chapters that are full of pain, challenges and trials. But ultimately, the beautiful thing about our life story as children of God is that at the end of it all, we are going to overcome. Frankly, we already have overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. We just are yet to see the full manifestation of it. But I guarantee you, if you hang in there, you will see it one day. I'll leave you guys with a scripture from the book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. It says, For whatever was written in the past was written for our instruction, so that we may have hope through endurance and through the encouragement from the scriptures. See, whenever you face issues, I want to encourage you to pick up your Bible. I want to encourage you to spend time with God. Yes, it's not easy. I just shared it with you guys yesterday. I was very, very down. I was in a very, very cloudy, overwhelmed place, <laughs> okay? But the beautiful thing about it is the moment I chose to engage God, things shifted in my mind and also in my heart. Let's not allow the enemy to keep us away from being in God's presence because our weapon is the presence and the word of God.
And God has given that to us as a gift to keep us aligned with him, to keep us, you know, from falling or to keep us from falling apart when the trials come, because the trials will come. Jesus already said it. He said, you know, in this life you will face trials, but rejoice, for I have overcome the world for you. And that's pretty much the word for the day, family. I hope this encourages somebody. If it does, please do like it, share it. And of course, if you've not subscribed to my channel, hit the button below. Um, it encourages me <laughs> so that I'm definitely aligned. I know that I am aligned to God's will, but it encourages me. It goes a long way when I do see the fruit that the work is bearing in the lives of people, ultimately to God's glory. And like I always tell you guys, I may not have all the answers. I may not know it all, but I am glad I'm the one that does. And that's Christ Jesus, and you can know him too. Until next time, it's your girl Toyosi signing out. You have a wonderful, blessed, and fulfilled week. Bye-bye.